It's been a couple of weeks since I watched Maestro, and I think the closest similarity to Leonard Bernstein to any other famous person I can think of would be Freddie Mercury from the band Queen. There are superficial similarities between the two that I'd like to get out of the way first. They were both in practical terms bisexual, but kind of preferred men. They both worked in the music industry as well, but they're not the similarities that I find most interesting. What I mean to say is Leonard Bernstein and Freddie Mercury are examples of very rare human beings who wanted to do a particular thing, were extremely talented at doing a particular thing, and were exactly in the right place at the right time. Personally, I find those kind of people really interesting to watch. Singer, actor, musician, whatever they happen to be. Talented people doing their thing is a very engrossing and sometimes magnetic experience. I find it absolutely fascinating to watch people like that, who seem to have exactly found their niche, showered with all the praise, recognition and material success that's available. It seems like when you have that kind of person in your life, everyone around them very much lives in their orbit. There's lots of Leonard Bernstein's music in the film. The guy was a conductor, a composer, a musician. It's spread throughout the movie. But the focus of this film seems to be portraying this human as a talent, as a force of nature moving through the world, and how that affects the people around him, especially his wife. So this is a biography. These kind of films very much live or die on the central performance. And I think it's a great central performance. Bradley Cooper dominates the film. He really projects this larger-than-life persona onto the screen. I mean, it's Bradley Cooper. I really enjoyed the Hangover movies. I understand they're just one movie made three times, but I thought they were really funny, and I liked him in those movies. On the other hand, I couldn't stand his performance in Silver Linings Playbook and the stupid trailer for Limitless talking about only using 10% of your brain. Irrationally annoys me. I just watched this movie on a whim. I didn't really have any expectations at all, but I thought he was great. While I was watching it, I kind of stopped comparing it to any other of his films that I've seen him in before. I was just engrossed in this particular film, just engrossed in the story. I had no idea he was actually this good at being an actor, this massive talent, Leonard Bernstein, who apparently wore it very lightly and didn't rub it in people's faces too much. After this, I'm really looking forward to seeing Bradley Cooper's next movie. Carrie Mulligan also does a really good performance here, playing the spurned wife. She takes a little bit of a back seat, but I think that's in the nature of the story. So in real life, Leonard Bernstein's wife was an actor with her own career, but as he became more famous, her career fell by the wayside. So if it's a secondary performance in the movie, that's kind of the point. It's very much focused on Leonard Bernstein as the central character. The wife seems particularly badly spurned and irrelevant, as it seems that Bernstein was choosing to sleep with men rather than women outside of his marriage. But I think the homosexuality thing is kind of incidental rather than being central to the story. I think that unfortunately, and the 10% of my YouTube viewers who are women might not like this, but generally rich, successful, talented and famous men aren't really monogamous. Whether it's with men or women, I don't think it really makes much of a difference philosophically. Generally, men are monogamous because they have to be, because they don't really have any other options. Because getting one woman and providing resources for one woman is enough of a task to achieve, and finding the time and resources for others is unrealistic. If the movie is anything to go by, it seems like Leonard Bernstein was for the time relatively open about his preferences. So while he wasn't being totally honest, he kind of came as advertised. Like I said at the beginning of the video, watching an exceptionally talented person express their talent is mesmerizing. And the price of being around such people is that often they're just gonna do whatever they want because they can and because people let them. Because being around a genius and watching them perform is such an attractive experience. So this was a pretty good film. And it looks like the guy from The Hangover and The Wedding Crashers could be one of our next great filmmakers. Thanks for watching.